Hello YouTube, Captain Darren here. I'm here at the uh, home QTH in Atlantic Beach, Florida. And today I'm gonna raise my antenna. Uh, I think it's about like 10 feet. The HF Comet CHA 250B, B as in Bravo. Um, it's rated for 200 watts, I believe. And they recommend it to be at least 33 feet. So I'm gonna raise it up to 35 feet on the mask. A couple weeks ago, the, the person who mows our, our yard here uh, accidentally uh, ran over the guy wires. So as you can see, we got those little uh, sewing pole doodles or noodles, not doodles, noodles uh, that we bought from uh, Dollar Tree. It's only a dollar, so it's not bad. And we put those on the guy wires. They're all on the lower level. So I'm going to add the middle section and I'm going to add the, the top section wire guys and also the on the very top of the antenna we will be installing the, um, the rope guys. Um, so it's going to have like at least one, two, three, four guy wires up going up to 35 feet. Alright, so uh, I'll be working by myself. I'm going to lower down the antenna, dismount the the antenna from its mount and then um, uh, hopefully I get a better reception so stay tuned I'm gonna document this on uh, on the camera all right here's my uh, some of my tools I'll be using these are the rope that I had on the top um, guy rope 42 feet 9 inches so that's short. When they, when they, um, when the guy who mows our lawn, when he uh, knocked down the antenna by uh, eating up the guy wires, the guy, it was mounted. There's the antenna mask. It was mounted down here somewhere, and then he mowed over it, and um, it knocked down the whole wire, and it landed in the middle of the street. So. My antenna element's kind of bent up, but I made it straight as much as possible. So I relocated it, and now I mounted on this old tree stump here with the eye, and it's pretty stout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that that rope right here is long enough to be mounted here on this little pad eye all the way to the top of that mask. This one has the turnbuckle there. So I don't know, I guess this is about what, two, just over two feet long. And all this is just regular steel guy wire. Galvanized steel, I think we call it. So uh, I got the turnbuckle there so I can adjust the tension. You don't want to have it too tight. You just want it tight enough so it holds uh, it, the antenna in place. Okay, now I'm going to um, cut some of these tie wraps so I can lower down that antenna. All right, if I remember right, I need to remove this cotter pin. Yeah, cotter pin is removed. Yeah, this antenna when it fell, some of these tubes were bent.
I'm going to tighten this tensioner so when I remove the antenna plate that the center section doesn't slide down into itself. If that happens I need to disassemble the whole antenna mask and uh, flip it upside down or get a pliers or something and pull it out. This is how the uh, Easy Mask 33 feet sits at its lowest. You, you still need a ladder to get up on it. And uh, now I'm going to remove the antenna from the ma top mask section. Here's a close-up shot of the antenna. Yesterday, when I was on HF on 40 meters, on frequency 7178 kilohertz, um, I talked to one of the Filipino ham radio operators, the Mabuhay DX Net, or their group, uh, K5HPD. He's in Houston, Texas. I made a QSO with him, but the noise level here was so high and I told them I'm going to raise this antenna from 10 feet all the way up to 33 feet and hopefully I can uh, have a better better signal report from him. Alright, now that these antennas are really loose, I'm going to raise the, uh, raise the antenna above the mast and catch it. Take a look here. I guess I want to do it like this. Do it like a hitch. One, two, three. Okay, I'm ready to remount the antenna to the mast. It's kind of not really too windy, so it should be fairly easy. I've done this several times already. Finger tighten these U bolts. While the antenna was down, I checked, make sure that all the elements were all tightened together. Nothing was loose.
back in the old days when I was in the Navy I used to do antenna maintenance all the time we, we called it the PMS preventive maintenance system so we've done maintenance either quarterly semi-annually or annually had to go all the way to the top of the mast on the aircraft carrier I was stationed on the John F. Kennedy and when I'm, I'm afraid of heights and when I was up there it's like I was shaking the whole time trying to do these uh, antenna maintenance alright that's nice and snug you don't want it too tight you're going to, you're going to squeeze the pole nice and snug The antenna, the mast fell down, so it's kind of crook crooked. So I gotta find which is the best side to actually push it up. I, love you. I got some cotter pins ready to go. I'll put one on on top of the ladder. I like to wear gloves because sometimes if the mast were to slip and come down on you. Uh, at least you got some sort of protection. All right. No longer need that. Go up a little bit. Find which is the best side to raise. up first. Okay. Right. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to spray some WD-40. All right, WD-40. Now these ferret beads, they always slide. I'm just going to put a, some um, electrical tape on the end so it doesn't seem to slide back down the coax. Create like a little break. side of this connector. Make sure there's no contaminants on the inside. All right. The Coax PL259 connector is clean. The SO239 is clean. I'm going to use this Permatex tune-up dielectric grease. That's what I'm going to use on the uh, outer thread. That's going to prevent any moisture from seeping in into the connector and possibly shorting out the center conductor and the outer shield. Good. I'm going to do the old fashioned way to wrap uh, waterproof. I'm just going to use electrical tape. Nothing special. I don't know what brand. There's no identification. I'm just going to wrap the coax connector several times. I need to take off the gloves because I don't. I can't feel the electrical tape. It works better that way.
and now it's time to raise the mask I gave it time for that WD-40 to settle in penetrate the, the tubes so it would be much easier for me to lift not lift but push up all right brakes loose Yeah, that's easy. Went up so easy. You can see the, the rope mast swaying in the wind. Yeah, it's a little bit windy here. All right, I think we're at the top. Yeah, that's the top. The cotter pin goes in that hole right here. So I'm gonna set the brake. Another tire right here. Doing this all by myself. All right, cut a pin. Right there. Okay, yep, I felt the cutter pin right here. And then when there's tension, the cotter pin, I mean the, the top upper mask is resting on the cotter pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this here. I'm going to tighten this clamp, compression clamp right there while it's resting on the cotter pin. Not super tight, just nice and snug. And I need to get a, a plier. To, oh, I don't need a plier. I can just bend it like this. About 45 degree angle. So that way the cotter pin will not back out. Alright, so this is where my guy, guy wire will be. So what I need to do now, I need to attach the top guy wires and spread them out. Okay. I already have a guy wire or a turnbuckle already here assembled. Okay, I'm going to leave a gap open like this so that when I have tension I can squeeze them together by twisting the turnbuckles and tighten up the guy wire. Alright, so as you see, this has already been used before. I'm going to sit it at the same position like this and just wrap it around itself. All right, now I'm working on the top guy now. So I got this piece of wire, guy wire. Uh, maybe it looks like it's about one, two, three, just a little over three feet. The other two are like two feet. So what I want to do is basically attach the turnbuckle to one end of the guy, and this side will be attached to the main top guy wire. like that. 
<clears throat> now to attach the turnbuckle. See how it's just too long? I'm gonna have to cut that. I'll do that later. Make sure I have enough guy wires on the main top wires. Okay, now here's the top section of the guy. You gotta be careful. Um, there's gonna be wires and ropes all over the place as you raise the mast. So I'm gonna attach this guy wire to that tree stump. I don't know, about six inches or so. Just twist it on itself. Okay, now this here is the top guy plate. I got three wires already attached to the plate and I'm going to raise it. Let me show you the turnbuckle. Okay, the turnbuckle is this one here. That's going to be the top one. Okay, it's not secured completely. I'm going to monitor it as we raise the guy. Okay. You got to be careful as you raise it. You don't want to have these wires to kink. It's a pain in the butt to take out once they start. Here's the second one. Again, that's a temporary those are temporary twist so I can adjust it later. And the third one is on the stump. It's this wire right here. This is the compression brake here. And this is a compression plate. Compression lock into place. As you raise the mask, you also need to tie uh, tie wraps on your coax line so that it doesn't fly in the wind. What I'm using here is the LMR 400. I'm treating you to raise it. Compression. Make sure the guys are going in the same direction and that the mass is not twisting on you as you raise it. Okay, again, this is the compression plate, nice and snug. Cotter pin is in place. The middle section of mask is resting on the cotter pin, and I'm going to bend the cotter pin 45 degrees. This outer one out 45 degrees. There it is, nice and bent. All right, so that's the mask above, and the guy wires are going in the right direction. Okay. Now for the middle, time to install the guy wires for the middle mask, or the middle. Alright, now it's time to raise it to the next level. It's getting hot in here in Atlantic Beach, Florida. Sweating. Bright sunny day. When I measured that, I had to make one more turnbuckle. Uh, cable 
I measured it, it's around three feet, not two feet. So that's my scenario, three feet. I'm gonna look at the guy wires. They had a kink there, I can see it. I'll show you. That wire right there. I have a little kink. And I just loosened up that guy guy wire right over there. The top section, it was getting too tight. I'm almost to a point where I can insert the second cotter pin. Alright, break off. I can see the hole here where we're almost at the bottom I just need to bring it up just a little bit maybe about a half inch break off just a minute I'm down oh. break on all right I can see straight through cotter pin going in Bend it at a 45. Release the brake. Press on the cutter pin. Brake on. Got a problem here. Because I got another section to go up. And that, that guy wire right there is short. I believe I got to switch backwards. I believe <laughs> these guys are going to the top and then the ones on the top go to the middle section. All right, I got to break I got to bring it back down and break all those tie wraps. Well, I um, I muffed up the, uh, the top guy wire, my math was wrong and then when I recalculated the Pythagorean Theorem, um, I'm like five to six feet short. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the guy that I already cut for a later project and later I wanna show you how I came up with the required uh, guy wire length for the top mass plate. So right now, I'm just hooking up the second, the middle section, and I'm just going to go with that and order some more of these uh, guy wires. Okay. So here's the eyelet on the tree stump. This mask here, or this guy wire here with a turnbuckle, it's right there. That one's attached to the lower mass plate. Yeah, this is just temporary. I'm gonna bend that once I bring the antenna back down and then raise it because I need to take off the top mask. These guy wires right here, they're too short, right? So I'm gonna be working with the bottom mask guy plate and also the middle. Well, I'm done. I had to make, well, actually, it's incomplete right now as the rope guy on the very tippy top, it's, uh, it was short. So I have to order another roll of, of uh, three millimeter rope. And uh, also I had to order more guy guy wires because that top section up there I need to guy it make sure it's um, nice and and straight right now there's like a lean to it all right that's my setup for today and let me show you the Pythagorean theorem I made a mistake 
So uh, let me show you that. All right, here's a Pythagorean theorem. It's a square plus b square equals c square. So on that top mask plate, I had to measure out each section and I, I, I uh, measured it in inches. So there's a total there, 310 inches. So here's the antenna, got, uh, antenna mast and this is my distance to the guy, guy uh, pad eyes. So the height, it's the A square. The distance from the mast to the guy uh, base, it's 18 feet. And I'm trying to solve for C. So, all right, so I need to convert the inches into feet, which is around 26 feet. So that's A. I put uh, 26 square plus 18 is the distance between the mass and the pad eye. 18 square equal C or the square root of C. So I come out with 26 square equals 676 plus uh, 18 square equals 324. Add those up and it equals the square root of 1000. And you use a calculator and it comes out to 31.6 feet. Let's round it up. So I just said, get, said 32 feet each. So I need to buy approximately uh, close to 100 feet of guy wires. And that's another project I need to, to do in the future. Well, I'm done for today. I hope uh, you enjoyed my video. There was a lot of mistakes that I did. I came up short on the guy wires and, uh, and also short on the, the uh, rope guy on very top. So um, I got to maybe learn how to do math again. The Pythagorean theorem I and I had to make sure it was accurate on the measurements so as I was pushing up the mass I was measuring from the uh, the cotter pin to the next cotter pin for each section so I came very accurate this time if you enjoyed the video please consider subscribe click the like and also the bell button so you can see more of my videos of amateur radio and also sports cars and perhaps flying. Those are my three passions. Thank you, and this is Captain Darren signing off.